Hey, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. It's um, a lot of fun for me to get to come to town and I'm um, to get to tell you about the research that's going on in our lab. And then also just I'm delighted that people want to come out and hear science, you know, in an evening. And so that's a big thrill for me to get to share this with you. And so um, so what I want to do tonight is I only have sort of one goal for the whole seminar, which is not that long, which is to try to convince you that bacteria can talk to each other. And if I manage to do that, the secondary goal that I have for this, for this talk is beyond trying to show you that they can talk, to try to also convince you that bacteria are multilingual and that the ability of bacteria to talk to each other gives them um, traits that they could never accomplish and abilities that they could never manage if they simply acted as individuals, as asocial sort of um, non-communicative organisms. And so in order to do that, I want to just make sure that everybody knows what bacteria are because maybe it's been a while since you learned about them. And so what I have on this first slide, this is sort of like the, a cartoon of a sort of typical bacterium that might live in your intestine. But all bacteria look pretty much the same. And what they are are single-celled organisms. So they all are one cell, and they're covered in a membrane that you can think of like their skin. And so that keeps the outside out and the inside in, the same as our skin does. So they're covered with this membrane. And then inside of the membrane, what they have are is a cytoplasm, which is just sort of like the goop that contains all of the biomolecules, the proteins, the enzymes, the lipids, the things that make the bacteria alive. And then what's special about bacteria is that they each only have one piece of DNA, and that's this blue stuff in the middle of the cell. And so they, simp they have one chromosomes. We have many chromosomes, but bacteria only have one. And so they don't have very many genes. They typically have a couple thousand genes, which are which is the information that encodes all of the parts and the biomolecules that are inside of a bacteria. And so since bacteria are so simple, they're single cells, they only have one chromosome, very few genes, they've always been to, considered to be incredibly primitive, simple organisms. We've known about bacteria for about 400 years, and they've always been thought to live absolutely asocial, reclusive lives. What they do for a living is they consume nutrients from the environment, so they consume small molecules, and that allows them to grow to twice their size. And once they get to twice their size, they double their DNA, they cut themselves down the middle, and one cell becomes two, and so on and so on and so on. So they simply grow and divide, grow and divide, and grow and divide. And so it's been thought that they have this rather mundane, primitive life. But of course, you're here tonight because you've heard about bacteria somehow in the newspaper because they get tons of press. But all of the press that they get is negative, right? So we know bacteria because they do all kinds of harmful things on this earth. But what bacteria hardly ever get known for are all of the amazingly good things that they do on this earth as well. And so what I thought I would do before we get into the bad thing is to just give you a little taste of some of the things that bacteria do that are incredibly useful on this earth. And so the first thing is to just... Um, tell you about your relationship to bacteria. So bacteria are invisible. You can't see them unless you have a microscope. You've never seen a bacterium, and yet they make up 50% of all of the biomass on this earth. So 50% of everything is bacteria, right? Everything that's on this earth. But just in terms of who you are, I made these couple of slides to just tell you about uh, how bacteria interact with you. So what I'm doing here, this is supposed to be a person, obviously this is a, a, a human being, and what I did there was to make a ratio, we know how many cells there are in the human body, and so each of those circles represents a certain number of the human cells, right? So we know how many cells there are in the human body, and so I've scaled that down and put all of the cells that are human cells in that man. But if we actually look at how many bacterial cells are in or on a human at any time, there's 10 times more bacterial cells than human cells in you or on you any moment of your life. So you're really only about 10% human. You're 90% bacterial. But of course, you guys come to science talks in the evening, so you must know a lot about science. So you know it's not really your cells that matter. It's your DNA. So your DNA is the you know, genetic material. That's what makes you who you are. So if we want to do this in terms of DNA, I drew my little man again. And so here he is. And these are all the A, Gs, Cs, and Ts, right, that are the, the code, the genetic code that makes up our body. So we have the human genome. We know how 
how many genes there are. There are 30,000 genes that make up a human being. If you count how many bacterial genes there are in you or on you at any time, there's 100 times more bacterial genes playing an active role in keeping you alive every moment of your life. So I don't know which of these two metrics you like. At best, you're 10% human. If you think on a molecular scale, I'm a molecular biologist, you're 1% human. The other 99% is bacteria. And so these bacteria, of course, are invisible. And so we didn't know that they were there until a few years ago. But in fact, what we're learning about bacteria is that these bacteria that live in or on you are absolutely vital to keeping you alive. So the first thing is, is that you are covered in a, what's called a biofilm. So an invisible film of bacteria that covers your whole body. And it's your invisible body armor that keeps environmental insults out. So it protects you from harmful things in the environment. You guys probably all know that you have bacteria in your gut that help you digest your food. We actually can't do very much of that. Bacteria do that. They make many of our vitamins that you can't live without. They educate your immune system. So your commensal or your beneficial bacteria tell your immune system which bacteria are good and which bacteria are bad. And so they play an active role in keeping invading bacteria out. So they do all of these amazingly wonderful things that are critical for keeping us alive. But we haven't, we've always thought until a few years ago that these bacteria were just these passive riders. But in fact, they are beneficial bacteria, they are partners with you, right? And, they, and you would be dead without them. That's the bottom line. So that's the press that the bacteria don't get, is for all these um, incredibly good and wonderful jobs that they do as our symbionts. But of course, I don't want to be a complete Pollyanna. You do read about bacteria because they do all kinds of terrible things as well. So there are all kinds of bacteria on this earth that have no business being in you or on you at any moment. And if they do get in or on you, they make you sick. And so what I did on this slide is just to put a little, um, a few of the characters that you've read about in the newspaper that cause diseases that you've definitely heard of. These are just pictures of the bacteria that causes that particular disease taken under a microscope, right? So, so there are bacteria that are commensals, that are you know, mutualists with us, but then there are also all kinds of species of bacteria that live in the environment and they're not meant to be in or on a human. And so they have all these bells and whistles that make us sick. And so those are sort of the two kinds of bacteria that live around here, you know, good ones and bad ones, if you want to categorize them that way. But the question that my group had and what I want to talk about for the rest of the seminar tonight is whether you want to think about bacteria for all the good things they do or you want to think about them for all the bad things they do. The question that we had is how can they do anything at all? I mean, they're incredibly tiny. How can it be that these bacteria, whether it's beneficial or dangerous, have this amazing influence both on humans and the environment. And so what we wanted to understand is how could these itty bitty little critters ever manage to do anything interesting? And so the answer is gonna be, is that, that I've already alluded to, is that the reason bacteria manage to do the tasks that they do, both good ones and bad ones, is because they have cell-to-cell -cell communication. They talk to each other. The molecules that they use as their words are chemicals. What they do is using these chemicals, and I'm going to show you this, is that they count themselves. They recognize that these chemicals are there, and it tells them that they have neighbors around. And so then what they can do by measuring the neighborhood is figure out when they're alone and when they're in a community, and then they can carry out tasks in synchrony so that if all the cells cells work together, they can carry out these behaviors that they could never accomplish if they simply acted as individuals because they're too small to have an impact on the environment. And so that's where we're going. Bacteria are acting as these incredibly enormous multicellular organisms and, and that makes them very effective. And so I mean, that, I'm done. But what I will now tell you, I'm a teacher, so I tell you everything I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell it to you again at the end. I can't help myself. That's a trick that teachers use. Anyway, so what I thought I would do, so that's where we're going with this.